Hello, everybody. Oh, look, we have the combo right at the very beginning. Leyline of the Guild Pack comes down. This is the new deck. I did one with Leyline and Case of the Shattered Pact. And it was a five color deck with Joda and some other five color cards, and it was kind of fun. But as I was doing things, I couldn't help but think of a poison deck. So the thumbnail says a uh, uh, deck that's been 30 years in the making. That's because of how long it took for the theme of Murders at Karlov Manor to take place and how long it took for them to get Poison back in the game. And I'll go through a little bit of that history later on as we go through the gameplay. But first we'll see if I can survive this uh, discard deck. Uh, let's go ahead and take out... Let's get rid of a Squelv, actually. I'm kind of expecting a Liliana Planeswalker in here soon. So, I don't know that it matters what colors I get now. I don't think they have a way to get rid of Leyline. Let's cancel that attack, I guess. They've got two blockers. I might lose the rat anyway. Yep. So maybe I was supposed to attack that. They know I have one Annex Sentry. If I put one down and they, I take a... Never mind. I was going to say, if I take a Virus Beetle, <laughs> they make me discard the next one if they destroy the current Annex Sentry. So the question is, I guess I have to risk it. I can't just sit here and wait for the next discard spell, and I can't really just sit here and do nothing. But if they have removal in the, one of those two cards... I lose everything. No, okay. So we take out the next virus beetle. And we show our whole hand. And we have the case of the Shattered Pact. And now they get two poison counters. And this is the point of the deck. We don't care about their 20 life anymore. We just want to get 10 poison counters. Herbrest Forge is very popular these days. And I don't have a lot of ways to take care of artifacts in this deck, so... That's kind of a fun card. And I don't think it matters which one gets the double strike because they're all power one. But the point is you got four more poison counters on there, and unless they have a board wipe, Yep. They weren't going to be able to stop the poison counters. And so the deck 30 years in the making has an easy first win, even against Discard. Even when they saw the problem with the case of the Shattered Pact. They recognized its threat. That was the first card they went for. No good! So, welcome to Tipo's Corner, everybody. This is Travis. If you're brand new, go ahead and subscribe. And we always ask for likes if you're new or old. And I'm calling this the case for poison. And the first time was a very unique deck when I used the case of the Shattered Pact and the Ley Lines. 
and it was a lot of fun for me to use a bunch of five color cards but I did already have the annex entry in that one to, to take care of these little creatures that are mana value three or less and it just made me think if I can get double strike and flying that's like the perfect test case for poison so let's go ahead and gather up some of the biggest best poison cards that are in the current expansion and let's match them up with this combo and see what we get so what we have is one crawling course that when it dies you get another poison creature anyway sorry another toxic creature one copy of scrub is all I have so toxic one use it to protect some creatures for the venerated rot priest um, I've used this previously in a pretty devastating toxic deck um, I don't know what else there is to say about this card and I think it's a little overpowered and uh, <laughs> I think if there was uh, I think I'm scareder when I see this card than, than if I see Sheraldred. I see a Sheraldred a lot more than I see this card. Uh, we have one Destroy Evil, of course. Always a way to get rid of enchantments. One Duelist of the Deep Faith that has First Strike on your turn as well as the Toxic. Jawbone Duelist that already has Double Strike. Lion Sash is still here just as it was in my previous case of the Shattered Pack deck to get rid of uh, stuff from the graveyard. One Blight Belly Rat, when it dies, proliferates, so that'll add more poison counters as long as they have one already. Necrogen Communion, this is a fun one to um, put on Venerated Rot Priest, because if you target Rot Priest to put this on it, that gives them a poison counter right away. But it gives them Toxic 2, and when the Enchanted Creature dies, you return it to the battlefield under your control. So if they target to get rid of this, they're going to have to target it twice, because it's going to come back a second time. Pestilent Siphoner already has some evasion rate, Flying Toxic 1. We have four case of the Shattered Packs. Once you get all five colors to be represented in Solve the Case, a target creature you control at the beginning of combat on your turn gains Flying, Double Strike, and Vigilance. The four Annex Sentries all have Toxic already. We have one Cloud Skill, Clary, Cloud Still Kirin. Uh, this is from Kamigawa. You equip the creature. If you do, you can't lose the game, and your opponents can't win the game. Plus, it gives them flying, so I could give another creature that is toxic, give it flying. It doesn't have flying. Flensing Raptor, one copy, a 2-2 flyer with toxic one. When it enters the battlefield, another creature with toxic gets plus one, plus one, and gains flying. So a lot of using flying is evasion to get the poison counters to land. If those don't work, I've got four of Raska's Fall. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or poison counter, or plays Walker and gets a poison counter. I have uh, four board wipes that I like to do. Depopulate, by invitation only, Expel the Interlopers, and Vanquish the Horde. They're all slightly different in how I can um, get rid of, uh, you know, do a board wipe. We have the three copies of Leyline of the Guild Pact. If one of those is in your opening hand, you can throw it on the battlefield right away. And I have two Planeswalkers. One, a Johnny Sleeper Agent. For the minus six, you get an emblem. Whenever you cast a creature or Planeswalker spell, target opponent gets two poison counters. And Vraska... Minus nine, if a player, target player has fewer than nine poison counters, they get a number of poison counters equal to the difference. So it will be interesting to see if either one of those I can ever get to their ultimate. But the first match was, it went by fairly quickly. Let's see what happens on the second match. And away we go! When we're talking about the history, I've been listening to the podcast called Drive to Work by Mark Rosewater. He's a head designer of Magic the Gathering. Has been for a couple of decades or so. A little bit longer than that, actually. Um, I was listening to Drive to Work number 729 when Murders at Carlove Manor came out. And that was talking about something that they had been trying to do that actually they finally got to do. Ooh, we get ley lines in the opening hand again. That goes on the field. I like that. So yeah, Rosewater had this idea way back in the Tempest time frame to go ahead. Let's see. I want to look for a green, so I want a forest, so I can get out a rot priest. There we go. So yeah, Tempest was 30 years ago. You know, it, it was quite some time. Uh, do we have a way to get rid of this? I don't think so. Do we go for a Rod Priest? 
or do we go for case? I think we go for a rot priest now. So we've got the forest, we've got a swamp. We'll go for an island, I guess. If they can't get rid of Leyline of the Guild Pact, it won't matter that much. I need one of my four Vraska's Falls, or I need one of my four Annex Sentries, really. They throw away its Holly's Favor. And they have a Planeswalker, which is too expensive. They do that to hit me for three points of damage. Get lost! Okay. No blocks on that. Let's do Case of the Shattered Pact. We'll go get a planes. Place the planes? No, we can't. We already placed something, right? Okay, so just put out a second Rot Priest. Start the poison. See if they can do more damage than we can do poison. Ooh, because I have two Rot Priests out, when they target one, each one has the same effect. So they just got two poison counters to get rid of one Rot Priest. And they just had to tap themselves out to do it. They did. Okay. Interesting. Okay, what do we do here? I think Flensing Raptor. Another creature gains toxic with toxic gains flying. This seems like a good thing to do. Let's go ahead and see what else we got going on. Ah, oh, it's a land. I like that. Two more poison counters. Uh oh. Uh oh. Um, no blocks. What to do, what to do, what to do? Let's see. I think we just put out another case. And let's go get a mountain. Two's good there. We just fly in over their head. Up to five. Except I do need another of the two ley lines that are left to get my five color solving back, right? We throw away a second NT. Um, we can play the card, right? Let's play a land. Okay, so I guess it's okay to kill the one. Down to four, and first strike doesn't get me past Nalar. And now they have a chump blocker. Now they have two chump blockers. And that's not good. Um, what's left for me to do here? Not a lot. I guess put it on the raptor. Ooh, expel the interlopers is a good spell. I guess we're on defense now. Made him think. They can see my next spell. Can they knock me out with all of this stuff? Yeah, they're giving that trample. So what can I do? I can block here. I can block here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. Well, I guess I can block there. Do 
Oh, what is that, an unlucky witness? I think we just block that there. Okay, I'm still alive, right? Down to two. They go to six. Um, gain an additional counter. Sure, I don't think it matters. So it's gonna be destroyed anyway. Down to one. I don't have a second white mana source after all of that. <laughs> oh man. It gives him seven. It's not going to be enough. That's not going to be enough. They got me. Okay, so I did not pay close enough attention. That was my fault. That kills me right there anyway. So I was probably dead no matter what because he had that creature. And I didn't have a way to get rid of the enchantment. So maybe that didn't matter so much. But I should have checked ahead of time to make sure I had double white. That is probably the, the biggest double color that I'll need to have for this particular deck build. So back to uh, Murders at Karlov Manor, MKM. And going back 30 years to the Tempest time frame. And Mark was... Uh, is temporarily in charge of the story for a while, along with a sort of cohort, a partner in crime, uh, Michael Ryan. And they were designing an interesting story. They were designing like a trilogy along the lines of Star Wars, but they were designing the Weatherlight with a crew from uh, basically setting up with the template of the crew of Star Trek to make sure they had an engineer and they had a doctor, you know, that they had each of those key starship roles filled on their uh, flying interdimensional ship. And at some point, they had this idea that they could have a murder mystery that one of the crew was going to be killed and the cards were going to help tell the story of how it happened, of how it died. How, well, of how the creature, how the character got killed. And they wanted to create a maze, and they wanted the uh, cards to sort of reflect that maze and that kind of thing. And I think when MKM came out, there was probably a blog post by Mark Rosewater about this, detailing this history. Um, but but I, I don't have time to keep up with the reading as much. So, you know, I've been listening to the podcast. He makes them on the drive to work, and I listen to them on the drive to work. That is a Mosswood Dread Knight. I think I put out a regular land... We could just make him, could make it die now. Uh, I expect them to have removal pretty early on. And I wouldn't block with this anyway. I don't have first strike unless it's my turn. And they can just bring this back. Do I get rid of the Myco Tyrant first? Okay, I've got two white sources, so we're not going to make that mistake again. Go ahead and get the single basic island that I have. Um, next. Let's just attack first of all. We'll start we'll start the poison going. We'll just block it. Well that's a good point to bring in the annex sentry then, and let's go ahead and banish the dread knight for at least one turn. It's one of those decks. Uh, two ways to get creatures out of the graveyards are gone, and another Insidious Roots. I kind of like the fact that those are all gone. Let's do another Annex Sentry on the Undead Butler itself. Hit him with the poison. And we'll go get a mountain. Actually, a forest. We'll go get a forest. Shouldn't matter too much at this point.
Let's see what this hex gold can do. I won't let you fall. Yeah, you don't have anything mana value two or less in the graveyard. That's kind of strange. Um, let's go ahead and put you down. Put you down. Let's use all of our mana. And we're going to ignore the Planeswalker. Which is usually a bad idea. Especially if they have a board wipe. Two Insidious Roots with a third one in the graveyard. They get the Dread Knight back. That doesn't matter any. Take my mask is fall. You want to lose the creature or the planeswalker? Okay. We tag, they should block the Blight Belly Rat. No, they don't. Look closely. You should block the Blight Belly Rat. But we get to proliferate, so they'll still end up with nine poison. So again, without a board wipe, they should be in trouble. Sacrifice something and you get your 10th poison counter. We're done. So it works as just a regular poison deck. Anyway, um, back to the story about trying to do the murder mystery 30 years ago. They ran into some trouble with, I think if I remember the story right, the art director, where they were telling them we, what you're asking the artist to do they can't do because they wanted to do a whole like murder mystery type maze and the story would be told in the cards and you could stack the cards together and there was supposed to be like a, I think they said a hidden room. By the time you were done you could see like every room except for one and they would, part of the mystery that would be told through the cards was who actually killed the character. And uh... And they got so much opposition from this that they, they just couldn't quite get it done. Um, and eventually the story sort of got taken away from Rosewater and Ryan. Um, and I don't think we've been told the full story of how that happened. But they started this story with uh, the Wave the wave Rider and the, or the Weatherlight and the crew. And uh, things kind of end up changing on them at some point or other. And... Uh, Whatever story they started, um, it kind of just got sort of changed from what their original intentions were. And there's maybe more of a story to be told about that at some future date. Maybe when uh, all the guilty parties are dead and uh, Rosewater feels it's okay to talk about that sort of thing. Alright, Case of the Shattered Pact. We've got blue and white. We've got our double white if we need it. Let's go get a swamp. We want a Jawbone Duelist, and we want a Veterated Venerated Rock Priest. That's a lot of 1-1s. One Block that, let that through. We play the island. Hopefully, they don't think it too big a deal that we tapped everything except certain color lands. We pass the turn, we wait for them to attack, and then we get rid of into the trenches. Oh, that one's kind of disgusting.
Yeah, right. Out. They still get a bunch of 1-1s, one and they're going to get a lot of life, so we're probably up against Mandrak. We can block two of these. Put this down now. Put this down now. No attacks. Solve both cases. That's gross. I think they got us already. Unless I get a board wipe next turn. Yeah, no. We, we can't just draw land. That's it. If I had any clue it was going to run like that, I would have brought down Cloud Steel Kieran and equipped it. I was expecting something like Mondrak, not something that would boost up all of them right away for the entire field. That'll teach me. So they had to wait. What Mark Rosewater tends to do, because he's been around for a long time, he's learned patience. So he waited years and years and years, and when it seemed like the worm had turned and there were enough people around that he could do what he wanted, that the technology caught up, that uh, the art director agreed that they could do what they wanted to do, um, maybe they waited until this little arrangement with being owned by Hasbro and doing a tie-in with Clue made for good timing, whatever, I don't know, but uh, eventually they were able to do what they wanted. And I think, I think we want to play something. Let's go get our first planes. So yeah, Mark Rosewater's had a lot of ideas over the years, especially since he's been in that head designer spot for so long. Sometimes you have to sell it within the company because everybody's trying to make these magic cards. Everybody's got their own ideas for how they, they want to do it. Everybody's got their own ideas of you know where the story should go next and what kind of expansion set should be, set should be coming up and all these different kinds of... You know, it's a big company. They've got a lot of different executives that have a lot of uh, power and influence. So, you know, if you want to do things the way you want to do them, let's see, I think we go get a swamp next. Come on. And we put down Skrelv. And we have to wait a turn for everything to work. We'll see if they kill something now. They usually have a triumphant chop. They usually stack these dinosaur decks before those. So they should want to get rid of Skrull first if they know how the card works. They'll get another poison token, but they should consider that a fair trade. Yep, triumphant chop. Rip Skrull. Rock Priest is still around, thankfully. Oh, that's kind of excellent. Okay, so let's do this. Get rid of the yearling. Get him another poison counter. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Two creatures at once. Not the best thing for me. I was counting on them just putting out one big one. Yeah. 
two spells on the turn is kind of not the greatest for me. However... They do have one more open mana source. Let's see exactly what the types of cheap stuff they have in this deck. They don't. They don't have a way to stop it. If they destroy that, they might be doing me a favor. I can go get the, the mountain. Although that would get rid of my double white. This is going to be fun. Necrogen Communion. I target once. They get two poison counters. No attacks this turn. And a ground dinosaur. And because of... One or Dragosaur is really an overpowered creature. I mean... 5-5 five, five flying first strike for just 5 mana is good enough as it is, but then you also get a 3-1 dinosaur token if you exile a land card. Gross. And they're just playing all sorts of stuff. Again, 2 spells a turn. That's usually a bad sign. <laughs> if your opponent can play 2 spells a turn and you cannot, look at all the land they've drawn. You beat me on land. I think I got him beat, though. Unless they sacrifice the Dracosaur. If they sacrifice the 1-1, one -one, I've got him. Because they're going to get one poison counter here, and all four of my creatures on the field have poison. They need three blockers to stop the tenth poison. We just have to wait for them to do the math and realize it. They did not realize it. Okay, Crawling Course comes out just for grins and giggles. And we swing in with everybody. And they can't do anything about that. So yeah, as I was saying, Rosewater's been around for so many years. He's come up with a lot of different ideas for the game. Some of them have worked out really nicely. Some of them have worked, but not at the current time. Like, they tested them. They're like, oh, this doesn't quite work out here. We're going to set it aside for something else later. They did that famously with the energy that was used for Kaladesh. Um, Mark invented it uh, much earlier. And... Uh, Sort of trotted it out every now and then to test it out and see, you know, oh, will it work with this set? No, will it work with this set? No, will it? oh, well, they hit Kaladesh and suddenly it's like, oh, it works. Let's put it in there. And that's really a good practice to have if you're going to be in a particular place, a particular spot, a particular profession for a really long period of time. If you can be that patient, you can know if you've got a good idea, just, you know, don't go crazy trying to force it on people, but... Um, there should be more than one opportunity during your stay, so to speak, wherever you are, to be heard more than one time on the idea. And so, ooh, Leyline opening. And we got Case of the Shattered Pact already, so this should be fun. So he trotted out the idea eventually again. Calling Chorus comes out. We're having this murder mystery, and it fit in with the clue tie-in. And so it may be a thing where maybe it was a good thing that he was turned down the first time when he tried to do this, that he encountered this kind of resistance. Uh, let's go get planes, since we've got so much white in here. Uh, that one. We attack with the one. We see what they do. They've got black and white, so a couple of different possibilities for removal. And the first poison counter is on the opponent. So they were able to do their murder mystery and 
it's kind of like a happy ending, so to speak, for everybody in it. Um, they've got three colors now. The case is solved, so let's just go do the attack first. See if we cause them to spend any mana. Knockout blow, okay. That still gives us a creature back. And can we do another case of the Shattered Pact? Okay, they stop that as well. That's pretty good, right? Again, opponent did two spells. And actually, our five colors worked against us. The knockout blow cost two less because we were five color creature. Okay, um, they kept all their mana open. We're going to try again with the attack. They're going to let that happen. I'm just going to... I'm going to hold my ammo. The only thing I could really do is bring out Lion Sash. I don't really need to do that right now. I'm not afraid of them getting those spells back. Although, will they bother to stop a second one of these? I don't mind having two out on the field if they have a way to destroy enchantments in the first place. They don't mind that either. They did stop and think about it. So I'm tapped out. They have halfway to poison death. And that was all it took. So the other half of the story is the poison counters. Uh, Mark Rosewater didn't invent poison, but he loves poison. And uh, everything else that's come along after those original cards, there were only a couple of cards at the very beginning of the game, early on in the history of the game, that had poison counters. Um, he is probably single-handedly responsible for every other iteration for a mechanic that uses poison counters or the idea of poison being involved. And again, it's the case of he's been the head designer. He's been in that position for so many years. Um, I think he got the uh, the nose under the camel's tent, or the camel's nose under the tent, I should say, uh, back at, uh, oh, what was it? Time Spiral? Future Sight? That type of era? Uh, where they're like, hey, this is, you know, alternate dimensions, time travel, what might come in the future. What could it hurt to have one poison card? And then he does what he hates what people do to him with Planar Chase. Uh, because he changed with he tampered with the color pie in planar chase and uh, people are always like oh what about this one card you know we we should be able to do this with this color because you have this card and rosewater's like no 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 that's planar chase is the exception to the rule it's not one that uses a precedent but when he got poison in under this experimental type of deck suddenly it was like oh well yeah we can do that he got poison there and uh, then it was easier for him to get poison into uh, a more modern mainstream set. Paying three life to get rid of a 1-1 one, one, and I still get another 1-1 one, one back. Ooh, that's kind of gross. Usually because they have four of those. We'll go get our swamp now. We will attack with our 1 1. It can't block anyway, so it, there's no reason to keep it. And in the meantime, we get another creature down that's still a 1 1 with toxic. So, yeah, poison's the same way. Mark Rosewater's been conspiring for years. They put together a story element that had the Phyrexians. Poison goes along really well with the Phyrexians. And uh, so this mechanic came in as toxic and uh, worked pretty well. That is... What's your pack batik? He knew I had this, so he doesn't mind it because it goes into a land. And he can get it back. One poison counter from the spell and two from my attacker. 
and my attacker, my, my opponent feels pretty confident that you're going to have enough time to remove these. But will they? Do they have counter spells? They've got six lands. They're beating us on land draw. Well, no, I have a planes in my hand. Oh, that's one removal. They go digging? Or do they got a discard? Just another land, which they could have cycled and thrown something else away. Um, I think we go ahead and play. They know we have one of these. This is another way to see if they have counter spells or. Ooh, we got their Celestis off the field. That's kind of sweet. I forgot about that. It's target artifact or creature. Um, I had first strike. That was, was kind of weird. I guess they're just trying to stave off. Oh, that's why I hit Sunfall. Okay. Okay, fine. Let's take that thing away. They're still doing pretty good. They can get Ogre back. I can vanquish the Horde, but how much is that really going to help me? I can still get my poison through if they leave me Skrelv. But they're not looking to bring Ogre back. What are you trying to do here? They can cast pretty much any spell they have. But a make disappear was not going to be good enough. And they can't transform this creature. Oh, wonder. You started this. Guards, to me. There's another poison counter. It's a good game if they had a wandering emperor in their hand. And they're filtering through a lot of land. Keep watch for intruders. What's there? I don't care about their life total. Man, that's a lot of lands. Okay, so you um, we'll just pay the white. We will have you go attack. We're going to stop white from affecting you. Next, go take out the planeswalker. I'm never done for good. And we wait for Vanquish to pour. Oh man! Top decking a second Sunfall. If all I'm going to do is draw land, then I'm going to lose. An Annex Sentry, okay. Annex Sentry is acceptable. Get rid of the 5-5 five, five anyway. Now nah, you bring it back, okay. Hmm. <laughs> Well, that's kind of fun. Let's go ahead. Oh, I was supposed to go attack with the Annex Sentry first. Let's see if they counter this. If they counter it, I get another poison counter. Nope, they let that go. Okay. Does no good for a make disappear. 
do they have another type of counter spell? We're just going to start exiling stuff. Why don't you bring any of this stuff back? Uh, what else do we have in here that's a permanent? Creatures? Creatures. They're bored of me. They're tired of waiting. First they said good game, now they're like, you're go. I am the Emperor of Kamiko. Let your blade do the talking. Oh, now I'm gonna lose because I, <laughs> I'm gonna lose because they're using my cards against me. We've got the edge in this fight. It's no fair, those are my cards. May your blade strike true. <laughs> oh, and they have a Mirix? So they Show can do their own how poison? We greet our enemies. Let's see how you are. Doing the your go on me. What are you doing? That took you a long time to let me just play my card. With a Mythic Rare and a Planeswalker and me drawing lands, things are not looking good, sports fans. This might be a counterspell too. Just pay for that. We've got two mana to pay. You let that happen. Let's decades. Metal is eternal. That becomes a treasure artifact. Another for my collection. I have got new moves to teach you. I've not seen a way out of this. Again. I'm too far behind now. Put out what we can. I was just gonna say, let that be a lesson to you if you're in a place, especially a place where you can have ideas, where you can be creative. Yeah, they got so much card draw. They got all the land they could ask for. Oh, hello. That pretty much censors it. Strike fast and strike you know, they, hard. They took so long with all of their turns, and and I have to worry about them going your go with me. We'll leave. I didn't get any of the cards I wanted. I drew more land there than I did the entire... All the other matches. 
But yeah, if you're in a place for a long time, go ahead and, and save your ideas. If it's a good idea now, it'll still probably be a good idea later. It could be that you're ahead of your time. It could be that uh, they don't have the resources at the current moment to implement your idea. Mark Rosewater was patient. Um, he liked poison. He loves alternate win scenarios. That's part of the reason why he likes poison. So he, he bided his time. He waited until it was time for the Rex Phyrexians to come back. It's a very logical choice to add poison to that kind of environment. Uh, he waited uh, 30 years till it was a good time to go ahead and get his murder mystery going. And I think it makes, uh, since As Hasbro owns Wizard of the Coast and Clue Board Game, right? Uh, that's what you call the definition of corporate synergy. So um, that was a good tie-in in, in terms of the theme anyway. Um, I know there's been some criticism about the expansion set and maybe how it fell flat or maybe how they like the cards but maybe the execution has been lacking um, but in terms of looking at things from their perspective as a company that owns Clue, that owns Wizards, that you know Rosewater has this idea to do a murder mystery and if you go inhabit that world uh, then everything kind of clicks into place and, and fits together and you're able to have the murder mystery and uh, he's sort of he's able to have his cake and eat it too um, but this this deck, I just want to sort of see what happens when you take one of his long-standing ideas, cards from one expansion, include ideas from a, a you know, include uh, cards from another long-standing idea, and what happens when you take a couple of ideas that he had and, and they've been sort of stewing in the background for years, waiting for the right time, and they're both in the uh, they're both in the milieu in the uh, in the standard area rotation at the exact same time. I couldn't resist. I had to try them out. I think it works pretty well. You saw that I didn't do well when the combo didn't come out, when I, when neither of these two cards showed up. Sometimes I struggled. Sometimes it works as just a regular poison deck without them. Um, but uh, I wish we could have gotten a Johnny at least once. He did really well in my playtesting. Um, but, uh, yeah, overall, I kind of like the way it worked. So give me some feedback. Let me know what you like. As always, uh, make a comment on if you would have done something differently or if you like this particular idea of uh, evasion with like flying, double strike, that kind of thing, pairing it with the, the toxic cards. And uh, as always, like and subscribe. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.